the way that I am. I really don't know. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I am here with all of the books that I read for the month of February. Oh, last month I did read 24 books and 23 of them were on my Kindle. So I made myself a promise for February that I was going to slow down my reading a lot and try to focus more on my physical TBR just because I wasn't touching it at all. And I am proud to say that um, out of the 14 books I read this month. Six of them were on my Kindle. So I did make a really good chunk out of my physical TBR. I am very proud of myself. I also had several five-star reads, which was big for me because in January I had no five-star reads. So I didn't have any five-star reads to start off 2023. It was putting me down in a slump, making me depressed. But like I said, I'm happy to say February was a very successful reading month for me. Okay, so first I read Say You Swear. I did technically start reading this kind of early in January, but like I said, I just was not into physical books at the time, so it was just taking me a lot longer. But once February hit, I dedicated myself to finishing this, and once I sat down and just really dedicated some time to some reading sprints and stuff, I was able to really get into this, and I have to say, this was a beautiful, touching story. I cried at the end. I cried through some parts towards the beginning, halfway through. There, it was just a lot. It was pretty emotional. I am also just happy to say this was my first five-star read of the year. Yay. We love that for me. Whatever. I will say, if you have not read this, go into this book blind. I went into it blind, and I think that you are going to get the better overall experience journey reading this book. I will say it is a football romance, it is a college romance, and it is a love triangle. Now, this had been on my TBR for a while. I actually had downloaded it on my Kindle last summer, and I started it, and then I was like, oh, this is a love triangle. I... I don't want to read this. Last month or two, this book has really started to pop off on TikTok and Instagram and everything. And I'm like, okay, you know what? A lot of people don't like love triangles, but this seems to be a good book. So I ordered the physical copy because this is so pretty. And I am so glad that I finally gave it a chance. I'm, I'm glad that I didn't look up any spoilers or anything more to the plot because like I said, go in blind. There is a lot of things that happen in this book that are really just going to like tug at your heart. There's going to be some things that make you frustrated. But Noah Riley is like one of those top tier soft hero cinnamon roll golden retriever type heroes. Like he does no wrong. Like the things he was saying and doing for our heroine, you just can't beat that. But that's all I'm going to say about this. But like I said, it was a perfect five star read for me. Then I read Falling Embers. This is the second book in the Tattered and Torn series by Katherine Cowles. I read the first book in January. Two is going to follow Hadley, and Hadley is the younger sister of Hayes, our hero in the first story. And each book is going to cover the siblings in this family. I will say that, yes, it's a small town romance, but it also is romantic suspense because of just what's going on and the trauma that this family has experienced. So I will say to set it all up in the first book, um, this family, the youngest daughter, uh, Shiloh, she was kidnapped as a child for a few days and kept in a shed and it just really affected the family overall. And so Hadley, she was a little girl when it happened too. And it just really, really affected their mother in such a strong way that she really kept her kids under lock and key when they got Shiloh back. And Hadley just always resented it. And she's a big adrenaline junkie. She loves adventure. And so when you get to her story, she does a lot of daredevil type things she likes to climb bike all of that things that put her in danger and it really scares her family and makes them worried and so she has a brother's best friend romance it is Hayes's best friend and he's just always been around the family so he's known the trauma that they've gone through and He's really kind of been the only one that like supports Hadley and what she does. I will also say that he is a single father of two twin girls. So you do have that small town single dad trope 
also with the best friend's brother. Like I said, there was a lot to it, but I really enjoyed it. I just think you're going to get the better overall if you start with book one. I read The Alien's Prize by Zoe Draven. I blame my friend Demi for this, okay? So Demi, if you are watching, this is all your fault. This is very, very similar to Ice Planet Barbarians. Obviously, you're gonna have an alien romance here and similar to the to the plot of ice planet barbarians this story starts with our heroine having been kidnapped by aliens and with this story how it's different is she is like in this cage at the beginning of the story with these other girls in this like arena battlefield and so the aliens are there to like do a fight to the death match and then the winner gets to choose a girl out of the cage so what ends up happening is our hero he comes out to do this battle and he sees our heroine in the cage and it's it's kind of like a very faded mates type situation he sees her and he knows this is my mate she's mine so he totally destroys the other guy takes her back to his planet and he there basically you know he sees that she's scared and she sees that he is a good guy and she's like well now that you have me couldn't you take me home and this like obviously hurts him because he's like well this is my mate so he offers her a deal stay with me for a month see how my planet is our customs how your day-to-day -day life would be and then we can go from there and it was just really quick and easy read i think there's a ton of books in the series so I'll probably get to the rest of them at some point. You ever like put your foot in your mouth where you completely trashed a series and said it was terrible, you don't wanna read any more of the books? Yeah, so I totally did that. Um, in my 2022 most disappointing books, uh, I talked about The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. I didn't like it, okay? I didn't like the characters, I found them both annoying and just a lot of other things, but I wanted to read Terms and Conditions because it was Marriage of Convenience trope. Everybody said it was a really, really good book. And so it had been physically sitting on my shelf for over a year. And then Final Offer came out earlier in the month. And I'll be honest, even though I hated the fine print, I was getting big time FOMO. Huge FOMO from everybody reading it. So I finally sat down to read Terms and Conditions. I finished it in one night. It was a five star read for me. I loved it. Every problem that I had with the fine print did not exist in this book. Like, I did not like Rowan. I thought he was a dick and an asshole, but he was a very inconsistent dick and asshole. Like, he couldn't decide if he was going to be a jerk or not. Whereas Declan, he was an asshole and he was fully committed to being an asshole. And I've I respect that. And Iris was an absolute queen. I loved her. I loved the whole plot line of this book. So if you don't know, this is the Dreamland Billionaire series. And this is like Disneyland, but it's called Dreamland. So their grandfather owned it. He died. And in his will, he left each grandson a letter with stipulations of what to do to earn their shares. And for the second book, Declan has to get married and have a child to get his shares. And so Iris is his assistant. And she, in uh, the final, or fine print, she had been helping Declan set up dates, trying to find him someone. And when you get to this book, like in the very first chapter, they're about to announce his engagement to a girl that Iris had helped hand select. Declan scares her away before the party even starts. So Iris just jumps in and, and is like, okay, fine. It's going to be me. We're going to do this. So they cut a deal. They have a lot of really good banter. I will say very angsty. This was a really good slow burn too. You have an age gap. You also have mixed race relationship here as Iris is African American. This was such a good story. So then I read Final Offer right after that and I loved it just as much. I, I think I did read it a four just because it was a little bit too long I will say and I did have a little bit of gripes with this one. So this story is going to be a second chance romance with addiction being a very huge topic in here as Cal, the brother in this story, he has been trying to overcome addiction for a very long time. Now I will say I have a soft spot for heroes with substance abuse and addiction problems. Those are some of my absolute favorite heroes. It does hit a little close to home for me and so when I just read their POVs about struggling in their head and just wanting to take it all away, it just affects me in a certain way. And so I fell for Cal very easily. However, me myself, 
I had some issues with Lana. I liked her, but at the same time, I thought she was very, very, very harsh to Cal. Obviously, I get where she's coming from, but I really do feel like he was trying and she was very easy to push him out the door and throw away the key, even though there were people around her that were not perfect either. And there was just a lot of pointing the finger and just giving up on him very easily. And like I said, the reason I feel validated in saying that I was frustrated with her was because I've read enough addiction and substance abuse books to know that each partner handles it a different way when their partner has these problems. And I don't know, I just feel like Lana gave up on him too quickly. And there's another book I read this month where the girl would not give up on him at all. And I will talk more about that and you'll understand why, but I won't ramble on about that anymore. But I did love the story. It was still a good four out of four five fine print yeah I just didn't like it but these two books were really really good and I will from now on not trash a series after trying the first book I will try others before I try then I read Devil's Angel by Julie Capulet this was a really interesting story so it is a mafia story and it takes place in Hawaii and there are these three mafia families and over the decades generations they all basically acquired their own islands and sections well what's really interesting about the story is that some long time ago within the family some incident happened and there was this curse placed on all three families that if they didn't marry within each other each generation, they were going to be cursed. And when you get to where the story starts, it's very evident that this curse does exist because these families have like lost family members. People have died. Um, one brother tried to break tradition and he married for love and his wife and child died like in childbirth. And so these families take it very, very seriously. And so when the story starts, our hero, he is trying to pick one of the girls to marry. Because like I said, all three of these families have to marry within each other. So he has to pick a girl from one of the other two families. And so he's really kind of debating this. And while this is all happening, he meets our heroine who is a runaway. She is poor and she just kind of ends up on his property hiding out. And I will say this is very interesting insta love he falls for her it is love at first sight so he does have this problem where he promised his family he was going to be the one to marry and do this for them but then he finds this girl and like I said it was just a really really fun quick easy mafia read story and then book two I think it was called wild hearts I did enjoy this one a lot more this one was an arranged marriage trope so this is going to be the brother of our hero in the first story and obviously because these romance books have happy endings. Our hero ended up with our heroine in the first book. And so the brother now knows it's his job to step up and marry one of the girls within the other families. And this is an age gap. And the girl he chooses, she is virgin heroine. She's very sweet. She's nothing like her family members. And he is going to do whatever he can to protect her and keep her. And I just really, really liked it. It was, once again, quick and easy read. I read Wicked Saint by Veronica Eden. This was a really fun bully romance book that I read. It is a football high school romance. I believe it is the first book in a four-part companion novel series, all of them being bully romances, but different sports romances. It's just a group of friends that are just horrible guys, I guess. Um, so this story is set up where Logan, our hero, he is throwing a massive house party at the very beginning of the school year. Through a series of mistaken identity, he sees this girl from behind at a party and he thinks it's a certain classmate. So he grabs her to just start macking on her. Well, it turns out to be the new girl and she is only at this party to grab her twin brother. She doesn't like parties or anything like that. Her mom had sent her to grab him. She pushes him off but he is so intrigued by her like this was the best kiss of his entire life so the next Monday at school he wants her and he makes that publicly known 
well, she doesn't like him. She's not interested in anything he has to do or say. So she rejects him publicly. And obviously this pisses him off. So he kind of makes a bet with his team and his friends, makes it open season on the new girl who can take her virginity, who can destroy her reputation, take her down, all of that. And I just really liked it. This was a really, really quick read, but bully romances are some of my favorites. So if you want a new one to try, this was a good. Then I read Barely Breathing by K.J. Roos. This was another bully romance. Uh, this was a reverse bully romance, which was the first I've ever read. So this is where our heroine bullies our hero. So I will say that the themes in this book are very dark. I would definitely check your trigger warnings before going in. Our heroine has to deal with a lot of shit. Um, I will say there are some valid reasons as to why she bullies our hero. But basically, she was the daughter of a mafia man and her father just cheated on her mother. So her mother, to get revenge on her father, married her father's ma mafia rival. Well, this mafia rival is really bad and no good. He ends up turning our heroine, Asha, into a sex slave worker for one of his clubs, and he basically sells time with her to his business associates and she is so trapped she can't get out of this and so she puts on this facade at school as this just really stuck up mean girl and that's when you have Liam enter and Liam is the smart guy at this really elite private school and he's a cinnamon roll type hero and you can tell he's very drawn to Asha even though she's horrible to him and she is horrible to him like him personally because her friends are horrible to him and I will say so they do get paired for an assignment where they have to get to know each other more on a personal level and they really do and you can tell they start to fall for each other but as soon as Asha starts to see Liam kind of crack her exterior she puts up that bully thing again and I will say the things that she does to him, I mean, it is a bully romance and she destroys his property. It, it was, it was a very intense read, but it was really good. I was definitely lots of adrenaline pumping when I was reading it. Then I read Ghosted by J.M. Darhauer. This was another perfect five out of five. This was also another second chance alcohol an addict romance. So this is going to be between Jonathan and Kennedy. And there are chapters that alternate between the past and the present. You see them falling in love in high school and just this big epic whirlwind romance they had with each other. And basically Jonathan had always had these dreams of being an actor. And so he left high school to pursue those dreams. And Kennedy gave up everything. She was a scholarship student and she was set for college and she gave it all up to go with him and help support him. And she worked two jobs. She was working like almost 24 hours a day to help him make his dreams come true. And so when you get to our present day, obviously they're not together anymore. Jonathan is a very famous Hollywood actor named Johnny Cunning now. They like gave him a new stage name. And he kind of has a like Superman type role. He plays a comic book hero. And so they're filming the last movie in the series and they're filming it in New York City. And Jonathan and Kennedy's hometown is just outside of the city. And he ends up getting injured while filming. And so he kind of has to lie low for like six weeks before he gets better and can start filming again. So he decides to hit up Kennedy. Now they have a daughter, Maddie. John, now, I will say this is not a secret baby romance or anything like that. Jonathan is very well aware of Maddie's existence, has known about her since the very beginning, but he has never met her because of his addictions and everything like that. And I will say the tension and the angst between our two characters was so top notch and you really, really feel for Kennedy's frustrations, but she loved Jonathan. She never stopped loving him. And she was willing to give him a chance with Maddie right away when he decided to walk back into their lives. And I really loved the story. It was really good. Jonathan never stopped loving Kennedy. Never stopped. No matter everything he went through, he never, ever stopped loving her. And like I said, it was just a beautiful story. I really liked it. But if you like second chance romances, you like when your books alternate between the past and the present, and you like single parent, child, all that stuff, this is a good story. 
Then I listened to Sinner by Sierra Simone on audio. I had listened to Priest and Midnight Mass last month. I really enjoyed them. I think it was because of the narrator. Jacob Morgan can narrate anything and I will rate it a high rating, okay? So so I read Sinner and this is the second book in the series and this follows Sean Bell. This is Tyler's brother and Sean does not believe in religion at all. He is a powerful and rich business guy person. I really can't remember what he did but he is not for religion. I will say that in their family a long time ago their sister did commit suicide over a priest abusing her and taking advantage of her and that was why Tyler had decided to become a priest in the first book because he wanted to prove that not all people in religion are bad whereas Sean took the other route and said all religion is bad I don't want anything to do with it and so that's where Sean is when you get to present day and he has a romance with Zenny and Zenny is his best friend's little sister and the kicker to this is that she has decided that she wants to become a nun and by the time that he meets her and starts to fall for her she has about a month left until she dedicates herself to this and she wants a month of romance and passion and so she asks him to give that to her but then after the month it'll all be over well obviously in that month sean falls in love with her and so it really becomes a struggle of him losing the woman that he's in love with to religion the one thing that he can't stand um i also will say that there was another plot going on with his mother having cancer and it was just very hard to read or listen to but like i said it was just a very very good story and i'm really really excited for the third one aiden's i've heard that's like the best one then i read hawk by jesse hall i was excited for this one because everybody had been kind of talking about this in like the last month or two so I will say I probably would have rated it higher if I had read it at a different time now this was technically the last book that I read of the month but I wanted to save the best for last because I'm not going to shut up about it so I'm just letting you know now so you can probably close out of this video before I get to that but um I really did enjoy it but like I said I had read it right after this and my mind was just in other places, but I will say I did enjoy the story for what it was, and I would like to go back to it at another time to see if I actually would rate it higher. So this is going to be a boyfriend's best friend trope. So I will say this is forbidden, and if you do not like cheating in your books, do not pick up this story, okay? There is cheating galore in this story so our heroine has a house with her boyfriend they're in a very serious relationship they're not married they're not engaged or anything like that but they do live together and they do have plans for a future at the very beginning of the story her boyfriend leaves for work or something and he says i have a surprise for you later but he doesn't tell her what it is she ends up taking a nap and then she wakes up to our hero having sex in the room next door with another girl and obviously our heroine doesn't know who he is she freaks out so she calls the police well this kind of gets him into trouble because he is an ex-con he just got out of jail so there's a lot of very interesting things to this story the tension and the angst i will say was very top notch these two had chemistry and passion that i have not read about in a lot of books it, it takes a very certain type of writing to get there and i will say i really really enjoyed it Cameron Hawk was a great book boyfriend. He had a lot of passion and you could just tell how much he loved her. Um, there were these twists that came in the book that I didn't see coming. I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit more simple than it was, but I still really enjoyed it and I did rate it a four out of five. Okay, so if you can guess, you probably know based off my reading vlog last week, but saving six kind of like took over my life this month now binding 13 and keeping 13 were two of my absolute favorite books of 2022 i became very very obsessed with them very early on and joey lynch shannon's older brother i fell for him very early on joey dealt with substance abuse and addiction problems and in shannon's 
POV, you could just see the struggles that he was going through. And so I knew very early on that this was probably going to be my favorite character in the entire series. And so Saving Six came out and this is part one of Joey's story. And I have to say, this was some heavy shit to read. Like, Binding 13 and Keeping 13, that was a lot of heavy stuff too. But you get the Lynch family drama from Joey's perspective. And it is very different from Shannon's. I did annotate a lot of this one. I had a lot of fun reading this. I did take my time with this one just because I had so many thoughts and I just wanted to process it all. It did end on a cliffhanger. Redeeming Six is coming out on March 31st. The date got pushed back a little bit, but that is okay. But um, I will say that the events of this book take place before Binding and Keeping 13. It spans from 1999 to 2004, and it ends leading one week up to the events of Binding 13 when Shannon starts at Tommen. So <laughs> are we surprised at what I did next? Probably not. So I restarted Binding 13. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this reading order. Now, if you haven't read the series, read it in reading order. Read Binding 13, Keeping 13, and then Saving 6. If you are rereading the series, I say start with Saving 6. Because after reading that and then diving back into this one, I had a whole new appreciation for Joey and Aoife's relationship. I also had a new viewpoint of Shannon because Shannon talks about her previous bullying in this story, but you actually see it in that story. And what those girls did to her was very intense. And so, like I said, I loved this even more the second time if that's even possible so i'm reading keeping 13 right now um and when i finish with that um i'll probably read this one again and then depending on that how much time is left if i'm still really obsessed with all of this i might read it again i don't oh no why am i the way that i am i really don't know but anyway yeah, so that is Boys of Tom and Series by Chloe Walsh, everyone. Okay, so those were the 14 books that I read for the month of February. I'm really excited for March. Uh, I, I want to try to do one of those like TBR games because like I said, I'm really, really trying to dedicate more to my physical books because I have over 100 on here that I have not read and that's really bad. And I might get my book buying privileges taken away from me by my husband if I don't start reading them soon. So we will see what I can come up with for March. I don't know. But like I said, I loved February. It was a great month. I read some great reads. Um, it was a month for substance abuse and addiction. So I think it did inspire me that I do want to do some type of rec video coming up with book boyfriends that deal with substance abuse and addiction because I do have quite a bit. I don't know. I just like them when they're broken and tormented and traumatized. There's just something about it, okay? But anyways, uh, don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Um, leave a green heart emoji if you made it this way through because we're now into March and I'm into all things green, I guess. So anyways, as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye!